Hi guys and welcome to my review of Tourist Trap which I watched for the second time this week having first seen it a few years ago. This is essentially a killer mannequin movie that will either turn you off straight away or it might really turn you on in which case you can stay. So this was directed by David Schmoller. He went on to direct the first Puppet Master movie which in my opinion is one of the only Puppet Master films worth watching. Not too far apart are they? Puppet Master and this. In terms of the actors, the only one that I recognised coming into this was Tanya Roberts. She went on to play the, the character of Stacy in A View to a Kill. That's what she's most famous for, being a Bond girl, although sadly she died quite recently during Covid, I think. But long before Tanya Roberts got to dine in opulence with Roger Moore as he served her quiche, she had to run around in a tight little top being chased by mannequins. That's just how Hollywood works, unfortunately. You've got to sort of work your way up. You've got to earn, earn the right to sleep with good-looking grandpas. Also in this film, we have an actor called Robin Sherwood. Robin Sherwood? The name just jumped out at me when it came up on the screen. What next? A Jallo film with somebody called Maximus Rome? What, what are parents thinking sometimes when, when they name their kids? So in terms of story, what we've got here, we've got five youngsters. They're driving down the freeway. I'm not sure where they're going. They break down. Of course they do. And they stumble into a closed wax museum kind of a thing with mannequins and wax models. It's all run by this... 60 year old proprietor who initially takes them in and gives them a beer and he's being all nice and stuff but as the movie progresses these kids they start to get picked off one by one of course they do but we're not sure if it's the proprietor doing the killing or whether it's the work of his brother who this guy apparently he helped design a lot of the models and stuff but then he moved away or did he? Uh, and I won't give away whether it's the proprietor or his brother. I'll let you discover that for yourself. When I was watching this, I very much thought that this film was a combination of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Psycho. But I just happened to look at the box as I was putting the disc away. And it says on the front, it splices together elements of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Tick. That's exactly what I was thinking. Carrie. OK, uh, well, the, the, the models in this, the, the mannequins, they are being controlled by telekinesis, so fair enough. And House of Wax, which, yeah, I can, I can totally see that as well. Uh, although, personally, I've only ever seen the really, really old uh, House of Wax, which, which is nothing like this. Maybe the modern version with Paris Hilton is, is a little bit like this film. This film is at its worst when it's trying to be a little bit light, when it's introducing a bit of mild comic relief. It, it does this sometimes through its choice of music. The first 10 seconds of the movie is a case in point. It's a very strange little tune to start a horror movie with. There's a scene in the second half where we see the killer talking to one of his mannequins as they're having a little child's tea party thing, and I'm not entirely sure that this works very well. One of the tunes that we hear that, that's played two or three times, it almost sounds like a really bad impression of a woman enjoying sex. And actually, my wife, who wasn't watching the movie, she was sat in the corner just playing on a phone. She suddenly whipped her head around when she heard this music and, and suddenly she was interested in the thing and, and she pretty much watched the rest of it after that. The horror, though, is really well done for the most part. There are some genuinely scary situations in this i wasn't initially sold on this telekinesis angle this film strangely gives away the fact that mannequins will be controlled by telekinesis very very quickly with with its opening kill like five minutes in i personally would have held that reveal back for a lot longer the film then strangely tries to course correct that mistake by introducing another mystery that this time it won't give you the answer to for a long time so we're left hanging as to whether the kills are being done by the proprietor or his brother and we don't find out for, for a long long time the telekinesis thing i wasn't sure i liked it at first it, when, when i when i saw the first kill i thought oh do i want to watch a whole movie of that but by the end I, I was really sold, actually, because the finale of this, it feels almost like the reversal of 
the end of Friday the 13th Part 7. You know when you have the final girl uh, using telekinesis to move things in front of Jason and that's her weapon to fight back? This film flips the idea around so that the villain has telekinesis, which just makes the peril of uh, the final girl just even more acute. And I actually struggled to think that anybody could make it out of this film for a while until, until the script suddenly provided a convenient way. The kills are definitely one of the movie's strengths. There are several good ones here. One of them that really amused me is when one of the women runs into a room full of wax models of historical figures, people like Napoleon and a few other people. And these particular mannequins, they're carrying like uh, muskets and various other guns and they're actually loaded and suddenly these guns start going off it's like a like a saloon in a western or something you see bullets pounding off the walls and things getting smashed and this doesn't actually cause the girl's death i'll let you discover what happens for yourself but really good scene although the best kill in the movie ironically is the only one that doesn't involve mannequins so there's another girl who's strapped down to a table and the killer just starts applying this quick drying paste to her face he just starts putting it all over her nose and mouth he's, he's cutting off the airways and he does it ever so calmly and, and eventually the girl dies but it really hit me this kill i could really feel the horror of it it did sort of just throw me for a loop for like two or three minutes emotionally but it just goes to show that in any horror film, when you've got somebody tied down to a table and they are completely helpless, you don't need some fancy big torture machine or some massive chainsaw. You don't need to make a mess on the victim for it to be a good kill. Just the simple act here of airways being closed with no gore. It was bloody good, actually. The killer himself, he gets a little bit talky throughout this film. When it comes to me and horror... My personal tastes are that I like my killers to have their knives out and their mouths shut a lot of the time, you know. When it comes to the really famous villains in horror, I'm much more of a fan of Friday the 13th and Halloween than I am Chucky and Freddy. I don't really like that chatterbox style of killer where they're just monologuing all the time and trying to be funny. For me, that just reduces their mythos. It just takes a little bit of their aura away, if you see what I mean. The killer in this film definitely pushes it close to the line on that score. He does a lot of monologuing and talking, and I could feel my uh, thermometer for this going into the red zone almost. I, I was getting there. I was getting close to being pissed off, and then, but, but, but it didn't quite cross the line. And for two reasons. I think, firstly... The killer's voice is actually quite creepy, to be fair. When he's talking, carrying on, he, yeah, he does have a creepy voice. Secondly, this killer is not somebody who will monologue for ages and then give the victims a convenient chance to get away where you just think, OK, that was a bit pathetic. Even though I want the victims to win, that was really pathetic. No, e even during the, big, the, the biggest monologue scene of all in this film, the killer still actually kills somebody during the scene. So his effectiveness as a villain is not completely taken away by the fact that he's essentially doing a lot of talking so just to slightly contradict what i said earlier there is one admittedly funny moment in this film so this proprietor character he's a little bit like a more cuddly version of mick taylor from wolf creek he's a bit like a children's variety entertainer who's got a bit too old for the gig and now to listen to him it's just a little bit uncomfortable and in his first scene in this he stumbles across the three female characters nude bathing in an outside pool and he just plonks himself down on the on the riverbank and just starts droning on about the local area and how things have changed over the years and meantime these three girls are just stood in the pool not caring about this they've just got their arms over their breasts like when are we going to be able to move or get out of here? That, that 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 scene did make me laugh, to be fair. Right, I'll quickly show you the version of the film that I've got. Here is my Blu-ray copy of Tourist Trap. Not the best front cover I've ever seen, personally. But the film looks really good on this transfer. A little bit grainy for a Blu-ray, but on the whole, still very, very good. Um, a few featurettes and things. Uh, there's no commentary or anything, but there's one or two things that might pique your interest. Tell a lie, there is a commentary, I've just spotted it. There's a commentary by David Schmoller. I might have to check that out. There's also a six-page booklet that comes with this version that was done by 
88 films who often do very very good uh, blu-ray releases and there we have it and apparently Stephen King calls this one of his favorites so there we go right let's get to the bag of terror and see what the score is for this we've got one two three three and a half bloody axes out of five for tourist trap this is definitely a recommendation it's not amazing but it's it's a solid enough little horror film i had a good time with it for all 85 minutes that it lasted last night so get to it so there we are until next time cheerio bye bye